Good morning, Exchange. We're going to go one more time. Let's do one more time. Good morning, Exchange. Man, that was, that was powerful. That was exciting. We're excited to be here today in the house of the Lord. We're about to begin with what is going to be a special day of worship here at Exchange. We're thankful that you are here. If you are visiting with us today, we invite you to take the Connect card that's located on the back of your pew. Fill that out and drop it in the offering plate on your way out today. We want to better serve you and better connect with you. We'd love to get to know you. Man, it has been an exciting week here at the church, and that is for a lot of reasons. Uh, but this past week, we had the opportunity to host our first of three VBS art camps here at the church on Thursday and Friday. And man, we had a really, really good turnout for our first two days of the summer. We are already looking ahead uh, for uh, what's going to happen next month. And throughout the summer, if you're interested in serving in any of these areas, please, 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 we love your help. It was such a blessing to get to serve and minister to those kids this week. And we're looking forward to seeing how that's going to continue to happen throughout the rest of the summer. But today is a special day, and we have an opportunity that we should not take for granted to go before the Lord and worship his name with everything that we have. So as we start our service, I invite you, if you are able, to stand with me, and we are going to pray, and then we are going to begin to sing to the Lord in song. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning humbled and grateful for what you've done for us, the goodness that you have provided for us, and the mercies that are new each day that only you can provide. And as we go before your throne today, we pray that we would approach it with boldness and confidence, knowing that you are in control, knowing that you are above all things and you alone can save. And as we sing these songs today, may they be honoring and pleasing to your name. And may you be honored and glorified as we sing your praises. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let us celebrate this morning of the glorious day that is found only in Christ.
continue in song through fellowship and worship. i uh-huh. 
opportunity as a church family we have the opportunity to partake in the lord's supper this morning so as we begin with that this morning you may be seated partaking in the lord's supper is one of my favorite activities here at the church because in this time we remember what Christ did for us. So no matter how long you've been saved, you remember that by grace you've been saved through faith. That it's not of your own works, not of your own doing, for none of us to boast. The reality is we, as Christians, 
needed God's supernatural movement, supernatural work in our life for us to be saved. And it's because of that that we worship the Lord today. Because He has saved us not only from our sins that we have committed, but He has now set us free from sin and that enslavement to it and given us a life. A life full of love, liberty, joy in Him. And it's a life that is only available in and through Christ. So we remember today His death by take, taking part in the Lord's Supper. Because through His death, we have life. And now, we have the opportunity to walk with Him, to talk with Him. But we, as Christians, must die to ourselves and live as Christ. That means now that after we've been saved, it's not about what we want, it's about what He wants. It's not about my desire or your desire, but about His desires. And it's about seeking to live a life that is holy and acceptable, pleasing, not in your sight, but in His sight. And so with that being said, I know that many of us, all of us, have fallen short. And so we want to give you a time, a time to respond to the Lord. We want to give you an opportunity to pray a prayer over yourself. Search me, O God. See if there be any grievous way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. See, that prayer is a prayer of repentance. That prayer is a prayer of examination. That prayer is a prayer of, Lord, I'm inviting you into my life to search me and know me and know my heart and lead me in the way you have called me, you want me to go. We all need that in our life. Maybe you have some decisions that are coming up that are challenging and are difficult, and you're just praying for the Lord to move in your life to work and throw, show what he needs to do. Seek him today. But don't allow something to be in between you and your relationship with the Lord. So if he reveals anything to you, repent of it. Seek forgiveness. 1 John 1 9 says that if we ask for forgiveness, our God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Here at Exchange, we practice what we call open communion. So you don't have to be a member of this church to partake in the Lord's Supper. You just have to be a believer in Jesus Christ. So if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, we ask that when we pass the elements that you just wave your hand and say, no, I, I don't want to partake today. And that's just fine. We're glad that you're here. We want you to respond to the message of Jesus Christ, but don't, don't partake in this meal. This is for those who believe only. So as, as our ushers make the way, their way forward, we practice also what's called, um, we, we practice a two-cup communion. And so we double cup. So there's the top cup is juice. The bottom cup is, um, is the wafer. And so make sure uh, today you grab both cups. The gentleman will not be handing you the cups today. They've been handing out the cups for a while, you will be able to the, hold out the tray in front of you. you. You can grab your own little cup. So make sure you grab both cups. That's just a little shift that we're doing today. But on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he sat with the disciples in the upper room and he changed the Passover meal. And he asked his disciples to partake with him in this meal, to remember his life, to remember his death. And that he would take this meal with them again in the future. We take this meal with that hope that we will partake with our God, our Father, in the coming days. Will you pray with me as I, as we prepare to pass out the elements? God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. How it covers all of our sins. And Lord, how it it made a way where there was no way. For Lord, we were dead in our trespasses, but now we are alive in you. 
We ask, O oh Lord, that you will move in through this time and this place. Move as we seek to lean in towards you. We ask, O oh God, that you will search us. See if there be any grievous way in us and lead us in the way everlasting. Oh God, we need you. Oh, we need you. Every hour we need you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. came he reclined at the table and the apostles with him and he said to them I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer for I tell you I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God and he took the cup and when he had given thanks angel will you say a prayer of thanks over the cup Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, Señor, te damos gracias, Señor, por este, esta cena que vamos a tener, Señor. Sabemos que es representación de tu cuerpo, Señor. Uh, bendice a cada uno que podamos tomarla, Señor, igualmente como aquel que no pueda. 
Todo esto te lo pedimos en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amén. And Jesus said this, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And, and he took the bread, and after he given thanks, he had broken. Jeff, will you pray a prayer over the bread this morning? Heavenly Father, God, I just praise you. I thank you for our time together to remember what you've done for us that we could not do for ourselves. I thank you for the broken body. I thank you for the scars that you bear even now that represent our opportunity to know you and to be known by you. May we never take that for granted. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And he said this, this is the body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for this time that we've remembered your sacrifice on the cross in Jesus Christ. We thank you, O Lord, for his obedience, his faithfulness, to do your will and work on earth, to pay the price for our sins, though he was sinless, that we may have life and life everlasting. Lord, I pray that we live out the gospel, we live through the hope of the gospel, and we worship you in season and out. Oh God, you are good. We give you all the glory and praise for all that you have done and all that you are doing in this church. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand together and proclaim this truth. We are thankful for the price that was paid for us. For Jesus' death upon the cross, it's by his stripes we are healed. Let us sing that together. Thank you for the price that was paid for us. And we pray today that if there's anybody here that has not accepted the free gift of salvation that comes with that price, Lord, we pray that today would be the day of salvation in this place. Lord, we pray that you would be honored as we open up your word. May you be glorified and speak through it. It's in Jesus' holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. If you would remain standing with me as Christina reads from 1 Corinthians this morning. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, 
that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I, may, I myself should be disqualified. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 27. Amen. You may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. This morning we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 through 27. And we're going to be examining the reality that Paul, though free, made himself a slave to that which saved him, the message of Jesus Christ. So though he was free to live as the Corinthians had been boasting, we are free to go, we are free to do, we are free to please, we can do these things. Paul said, oh no you're not, for as Christians we are commanded by God to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourself. So all our actions are to be filtered through that lens, the great command. And they were also to filter our actions through the lens of the Great Commission. To go ye therefore, making disciples and baptizing people, the believers, in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all that God has commanded. So we have the Great Command and the Great Commission to do the great work of God. How do we as Christians live out those two commands? In this text, we're going to see how Paul sought to live out those two commands. Now, Paul was not just a church planter, a church, um, church planter and a missionary, but he was also an evangelist. So when he planted a church, he entered normally into a space where there wasn't Christians or there weren't Christians. And so he had a method of how to go into a context or a community where they had never heard of Jesus Christ and him crucified. And his mission philosophy, wherever he went, was this. Start in the synagogue. Why do you think he would start in the synagogue? Because they had the closest connection to whom Jesus would be. They, in the synagogue, were Jews looking for the prophesied Messiah. And so he would go in and he would share the good news of Jesus Christ from the scriptures with the Jews. And he would share until the Jews kicked him out. And after the Jews kicked him out, he would then go to the Gentiles, who were worshiping other gods, and he would share with them, at whatever connection point he could find, the good news of Jesus Christ. And so we're going to see in this text how Paul sacrificed his rights, his Christian rights, for the sake of the gospel. Christians are free to live in the grace of Christ. But what should our but what should our what what is or what should our motivation be? God has saved us for a great purpose and called us out of darkness into his light. Shouldn't our motivation be to win more people to Christ, to pull others out of darkness through God's power? The question is, how do we live in such a way? Paul provides insight into practical, intentional, and missional Christian living. Practical, intentional, and missional Christian living. The purpose of this sermon is to examine why Paul sacrificed his Christian rights. You can add on the end of that for the gospel. For the gospel. And so... As, as we live today, there are many people who sacrifice their rights or an aspect of their life for something. Today, it's really hip to be called an activist. I don't know what that means. What are you activizing for? Or what are you activizing against? 
But people are giving them life to, a, they're gi- giving their lives to a greater cause, or in their mind a greater cause. May I submit to you today there's no greater cause than to give your life to Christ? Christian, there's no greater cause than to give your life to Christ. And so we are called, actually, each one of us, to give our life to Christ. The question is, how do we do that? How do we give our life to Christ? And so I'm actually going to um, turn our attention to what, a little bit of what we covered last week in verses 15 through 18 in this way. Paul sacrificed his rights for the sake of the gospel. Paul sacrificed his rights, his freedoms in, his freedoms in Christ for the sake of of the gospel. What does it say? I just want to remind you in verses 15 through 18, it says this. But I make no use of my rights. That's no use of his rights to be paid for his living wage by the church. Nor am I writing these to secure any such provision. For I would rather die than have anyone deprive me of my grounds for boasting. For I preach the gospel, that gives me no grounds for boasting. For necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I will have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. So there was no question in Paul's ministry or in Paul's life, am I going to present? That word preach, every time you see it it preach there, it's evangelizo, where we get the word evangelize. And so it's not the public, it's not necessarily just saying Paul always preaches as in this format. But it's more communicating, I communicate or share, evangelize, share the good news, share the gospel with people in my life. And I don't charge anyone. That is my greatest joy. I actually boast and take pride in not charging anyone for the good news of Jesus Christ. So do you notice what Paul is saying in the text? He's saying in the text, woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. So he's actually, woe to me if I do not share the gospel. So baseline Christianity for Paul is share the gospel. Paul is now stepping it up a notch and saying, I boast in not having the gospel cost the church or the believers anything. So Paul never even had in his mind's eye a life that would not communicate the gospel. Because he's been called to steward something. He's been entrusted with something. And because he's a steward of the gospel message and been entrusted to share and proclaim that message with lost and dying people, specifically the Gentiles, he must share. He's actually under obligation to share. Do you find that I start the sermon with this interesting? If we took a poll of most evangelical churches, I think most people, if they answered um, honestly, they would say that sharing the gospel is not the benchmark for them. Sharing the gospel is maybe an outside goal. It's not the baseline. Oh yeah, I share the gospel. I continue to share the gospel. I speak. So I just want to encourage you this morning. If you're struggling in sharing the gospel, I I have a question of why. So let me give you a couple reasons why Paul did not struggle to share the gospel. He knew the message. Do you know the message? Jesus Christ and him crucified for you? He knew the message. He was deeply motivated because he lived under the pressure that he was going to see God and be judged, not for his sins, but as all Christians are, what they did or did not do with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he was deeply motivated 
that he would see the Lord one day and he wanted to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. He wanted to glow. Paul was no motivated because he was called by God. God called him. God literally snatched him. That's another word that Paul uses in other epistles. He was snatched from his former way of life and literally placed into this call, this way of life. God snatched him and placed him here with this call. God chose him and placed him here. It was not by his choosing. And so he is motivated by God's call. So he's motivated by the, the reality that he knew the message. He was motivated because he was no, going to stand before the judgment seat. He was motivated because he was called by God. And he had great boldness. I think this is where people, maybe in our day and our age, stumble a little bit. We don't want to step on people's toes. We don't want to get fired from work. We're told all day long we need to be PC. We're told that, but Paul walked in great boldness, telling people that sin is sin and telling people how to walk in life and in truth and walk with God. So Paul had great boldness. Paul was empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. You are given the Holy Spirit of God. Paul is given the Holy Spirit of God. Other than him being a capital A apostle, I would suggest to you this, that Paul knew more intimately what it meant to be empowered by the gospel and spirit-led more than us. And he knew what it meant to grieve the Holy Spirit and was motivated to walk with God and not do that so that he would see souls saved, lives transformed. He had an evangelistic strategy every time he went into a town. He would start at the synagogues and then go to the Gentiles. He had an unwavering desire to pe see people saved. An unwavering desire to see people saved. And he was willing to sacrifice his rights. He was willing to modify his life. He is willing to meet people where they're at. That's what the text is about today. Sacrificing his rights. We're going to see that in the text. So Paul sacrificed his rights for the sake of the gospel. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. He longed to make the gospel free of charge. So notice, Paul's benchmark is I must share. Church, I want to communicate with all of us in this moment. We must be a church that shares the gospel, yes, with our actions, but also with our words. Salvation does not come by works, meaning when people see your good works, they're not just going to magically get saved. They might see your good works, and they, those good works might um, give a testimony to the God in whom you worship. They might help your witness. But we have to do good works, and we also have to speak the truth of Jesus Christ. We are have, God's grace is upon our church. We are seeing many different little ones. We are seeing many different people come to our church, specifically this summer. And I love that we have the Metropolitan Library coming into the partnership with them, coming into our breezeway every Tuesday, and we are seeing these little kids step foot in our church, read some books, but get to connect with Christians, have a safe place. I love that we just had our first of our three-day, uh, our first of our two-day VBS camps. So we're going to have two more VBS camps. If you want to get involved, let us know. We need your help because we had a lot of kids. Praise God. Praise God. I loved it. I saw the little ones we haven't had in a real long time. And they're all following Ashley around this place. And it was amazing. I got to see Preston running around in the gym, showing off his athletic abilities, which he's very athletic, by the way. And it was amazing. I got to see Felicia lead and show out and show off in just the way she's supposed to. And that's awesome. I got to see many other people in our church step up and lead and use the gifts that God has given them. And creative. People are so creative in our church. It's awesome. Why? For the sake of the gospel. And we have two more this summer. 
here later in June, June 25th, we're going to have Impact OKC Day. And there's probably going to be a thousand plus people on our campus. And there's going to be a lot of activities from people getting eyeglasses to people getting some um, groceries to other food items that aren't on food stamps that they can get here at the church. There's going to be lunch provided. There's going to be a lot of activities, a lot of movement here at the church. But there's also going to be an area for prayer. There's also going to be an area not only for prayer, but the hope is that spiritual conversations would take place, that salvation would happen. You see, we're inviting this group to come in and be on our campus, and we're going to do a lot of outreach between now and then to create some waves in our community to get people here. Why? Because we want them to know Jesus. Can I tell you something? If you depend on me to be the only one to share the gospel that day, my reach won't be that far. But if we, if we are the men and women, the army of Christ that God has provided our church and equipped us to be, guess what? We will reach many, many more with the good news of Jesus Christ. And praise God for that. So we need you to help partner with us in the days to come with these different activities and events that are happening at the church. We need your prayers for wisdom and gospel impact leading up to them. But we also need a boldness. So be praying now in your quiet time with the Lord that the Lord would give you a boldness to share the gospel message at these events. And that we would see souls saved that the Holy Spirit would move. We must, we must see that our life, we sacrifice our rights for the sake of the gospel. Let's look at verses 19 through 23. Paul sacrificed his rights for the sake of sinners. Paul sacrificed his rights for the sake of sinners. Verse 19 says this, For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I may win more of them. Do you see that? What's Paul's emphasis here? Paul's emphasis is not his freedom in Christ. That's what the Corinthian perspective was. I'm free to do this. I'm free to do this. I'm free to do this. I have liberty. Paul is saying, oh, no, no, no. My motivation is that I may win more for the gospel, for Jesus Christ. His motivation was for sinners that he might see sinners get saved. Let's move on. It says this, To the Jew I became as a Jew in order that I might win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I still do it all for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them. In its blessings. Do you know that you have the good news of God and people who do not know Jesus Christ need this good news? Do you know that not only do they need this good news, it will save their souls? So whether they know God, that there is a God, or they don't believe him at all, they need to hear what you have. To people in the church, to Christians, we should expect Christians to act Christianly. To people in the world, we should expect them to act worldly. So don't judge people based upon their actions, especially when they're in the world. What do they need most of all? Not your moral ethic. They need Jesus. 
not your corrections, your edits, not your comments, your sarcasm, your criticism. They need Jesus, just like you, just like you. So what, notice what Paul says. He breaks this down. He says, to the Jew, I became a Jew. To those under the law, I became as one under the law. To those not under the law, I became as one not under the law. To the weak, I became weak. So he identifies four different groups. So the Jew, clearly he's saying, I lived by the Jewish way of life. And I modeled my life just like them. I actually lived under the law, though I'm not. So he walked through the ceremonial cleansings, though he did not need to do that. But he wanted to display to them that he could walk this way to do what? Earn a hearing. In a similar manner, he did the same to the Gentiles. He walked as a Gentile, so he changed his manner of living, not causing himself to sin, but to earn a hearing. To the weak, this could be to the Christian weak, because he had just talked about the weak previously in verses uh, preceding this. And he said, to the weak, I become as weak. So he didn't eat anything that would cause them to stumble. That, I might, he, that he might win more weak. The whole point here is this. Paul's motivation in every action, in every step, was to win more people. And to do what he could in his life, adjust his life to win more. What is a biblical illustration of this? Do you know... Paul's son of the faith, Timothy? Who was Timothy's father? We know his mother was a Jew. Do you know that his father was a Gentile? So how would Jews perceive Timothy? Not as a Jew. So he's a half-breed. And in the text, I believe it's Timothy who needs to get circumcised later in life. And I'm sure that Paul and Timothy had some conversations. Hey, I don't want to do that. That's going to hurt. But Paul said, no, 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 you need to be seen by the Jews as one under the law, that you might win more Jews. Because that's a stumbling block to them. You don't need that. It doesn't matter for you. You see that Paul sought to live his life in such a manner that nothing would be a stumbling block between the people he was reaching and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you seek to live the same way? Are you intentional in your life to live the same way? Think about your neighbors. Think about your co-workers. Think about your family members. Do they know you're a Christian by your actions and your love for them, or do they know you're a Christian because of your criticisms and your judgments and your harsh tone? Paul sought to change his life to earn a hearing. I think many of us assume we have a message and our message is right. So we're just going to go out and share that right message and not care about our tone. Not care about building the other person up first and how they feel or how they care or how they whatever. And what have we lost? A hearing before it ever starts. So maybe a problem with our evangelism is not a lack of boldness or a lack of knowledge, but it's a lack of love. A lack of love for someone who does not look like you, talk like you, smell like you, or act like you.
but are you willing to become all things for all men that you might win some? Paul was willing, and he was willing to sacrifice, to change his life and his lifestyle, the way he lived, to win more people to Jesus Christ. It's intentional living. You know the hard part about intentional living? It takes work. It takes work. And what are most people? Not willing to put in the work. We're going to see that in the next section. Not willing to put in the work. Paul sacrificed his rights for the sake of the gospel. Paul sacrificed his rights for the sake of sinners. Let's look at the last section here. Paul sacrificed his rights for the sake of himself. Do you look at, look at verse 24 with me? This was actually my first sermon I ever preached. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27, and I preached it way out of context. But we won't go there. Because whole, the whole purpose of this section is for the sake of the gospel. It's not personal edification, sanctification. It's to share the gospel. Because that's exactly where we are in the context of the passage. So what does it say here? Verse 24. Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control. Other translations say make it my slave, lest after preaching I should disqualify myself. from preaching the gospel. So Paul sacrifices his own rights for the gospel for himself. So how does he do this? Notice, he now brings on an illustration. He says, clearly, do you, uh, do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one receives the prize? He's writing in, in Corinth. They have... This is near Athens. They have the Olympic Games right there. And they would receive a wreath. And you actually had to show up 10 months before the event and show up every day to the gym for 10 months to even race one time. You know what's amazing? I get to see people every day at the gym be motivated for their ego. They're motivated to look good. See their abs, how big their biceps can be, or how much they can lift, whatever. They're motivated by their ego. I was motivated by my ego when I worked out in high school. I wanted to be the strongest, and I was. Just motivated by my ego. What did that get me? A broke hip, bum knees, and I'm still paying for it to this day. It's amazing what we will do for something that we see as precious and glorious here on earth, but it's amazing what we won't do for the sake of Christ. So notice what Paul says. It's athletes are amazing because they are unbelievably disciplined. They'll keep themselves from eating food. They'll only eat what's good for them, and they'll work out tremendously to do what? Win a perishable prize. Something that's going to fade. But the question at hand is, will you do the same for the sake of Christ? You have received a crown that is the crown of life that won't be taken from you. But are you willing to be the conduit of God's grace to continue to save others? And notice, to discipline yourself, to share the gospel, to be intentional in your lifestyle, to save others. Your life must be seen as a race. And what is your goal? Don't think that your goal in your Christian life is to be just saved and sanctified. That would make you the caboose. That the goal of you being saved is you. 
But the goal of you being sanctified is to love God and love others. And as you love God and love others, do the work of the gospel, the Great Commission. So you're not the caboose, but the middle of the train that you may win more people to Christ. So how do we win more people to Christ? We must be disciplined. The reason it's easy to walk an un disciplined life because it takes less work the reason it's easy to walk an unintentional life is because it takes less work it takes hard work to be intentional it takes hard work to be disciplined the question at hand is are you motivated by the right things paul was paul was motivated he says this every athlete exercises self-control in all things they do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. I do not run without a purpose. I do not box without a purpose, but rather I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching I myself should be disqualified. Disqualified from the race. So what is the preaching word again? Evangelizo, sharing the good news. It's not this formal preaching we're seeing here. That after preaching, after sharing the good news, I myself must be disqualified from winning the prize. Paul wanted to win. But he wanted to win for Jesus Christ, not for himself. He wanted to win others the gospel for Jesus Christ and not himself. So what did he do? He was motivated to discipline his body, keep it under control, and share the good news. What motivates you? What gets you out of bed? What gets you really excited? Because what Paul got excited about and motivated about was not only sharing the gospel with non-believers, it was winning them to Jesus Christ. And then sharing in that joy of their salvation. If you're here today, if you've never given your faith, place your faith with Christ. It's the greatest gift, greatest choice you can ever receive or ever Submit yourself to. What is the gospel? What is that gift? That you can have a new life. That you can go from death to life. You can have eternal security. And you can walk with God. Walk with God. Here on earth, and walk with God for all eternity. This is a new life that will transform you. John chapter 3 calls it born again. Paul says you go from having a hard heart against God to a soft heart for God. But you have a new life where every sin in your life can be forgiven, past, present, and future. And you can walk hand in hand, step by step with God. So if you have never given your life to Christ, know it. Today, it's a free gift available to you for no one, at no cost. So I just want you to know you don't have to respond by coming forward, but you can just respond in your pew by saying, Father, forgive me of my sins. I believe in Jesus Christ. Make me new. Wash me by the blood of your Lamb. I repent of my sin. Fall. I want to follow and trust in you. A simple prayer of faith can lead to an eternal life change. But we invite you to come forward so we can walk with you on your faith journey. If you've never been baptized, I'd be honored to baptize you. My brother, my sister, 
in the family of Christ for you to step out and testify of your faith in Jesus Christ. If you'd like to join the church, I would like to invite you to come on down, partner with us as we seek to be good witnesses for the gospel in this community that we may win more. And if you need prayer, I am here for you. The altar is open. Come and pray at it. But I would be honored to pray for you and pray with you. Will you stand as I pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, I thank you for the, your word that is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. And God, I pray that we would be willing to sacrifice our freedoms, that we may live intentionally, live disciplined, and we may be soul winners. Lord, I pray for each man, each woman in this room that you'd have your hand upon them. Lord, I pray for all of us that we would seek to live self-disciplined, self-controlled lives with the motivation to win those who do not know you to the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Give us the boldness we need, the strength we need, the faith we need, O oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Respond as the Lord leads.
to Pastor John for some special presentations this morning. All right, first and foremost, I want to uh, introduce to everybody so a couple that you all know, uh, Mr. Doug and Felicia Vizi. Will you guys come on up here? And they want to come forward and join the church. They've been a huge part of ministry that we've been doing here recently, and Felicia has been helping run the VBS. And can I tell you something? We are better because we have them here at our church. I can tell you that much right now. And Doug and I have uh, just enjoyed several uh, spiritual conversations in my office and just talking through different things, and it's been a joy. And, and so I'm just so excited to have them be a part of our church and be a part of us moving forward, and so that is a joy. Um, so yes, let's praise the Lord for that. And now at this time, I actually want to call all of our youth forward to come on up here and any of the leaders who are going to be going down to Falls Creek with them. And we want to have a time of uh, praying for, yes, that is uh, definitely you too. Yep, come on down. Um, and we want to have a time to pray over our, our leaders and also the youth. And so if you would be interested in coming forward and just laying hands on our youth and the leaders, uh, come on down, and we are going to pray over them. Anybody interested? Nope? All right, so I'll just pray over it. Come on down. Yep. All right. So would you guys just uh, pray with me as we... As we pray over the youth and our leaders and we're sending them out to Falls Creek this week. God, we thank you, Lord, for this week of camp. And Lord, we ask for your presence to be over each one of these youth and volunteers. Lord, that you would lead them and guide them. Lord, that you would speak to them. Lord, that you would um, change their life. Maybe, Lord, there are some here who are far from you, and may you draw them near. Lord, may this be a week, Lord, where some might be even be called to missions or vocational ministry. God, may you move in such a way. God, may this week be a week of life change in the, in the month or in the week of, of, of these youth's lives. That they would look back and say that Falls Creek 2022 had an impact in their life that they will remember forever. That, Lord, when they are 80 and 90 years old, they'll look back to this week. We ask that you would move in such a way. Lord, we know that you are able to move abundantly more than we could ever dream or ask. We know that you love us more than we could ever fathom. And we know that you love each one of these youth. And, Lord, I pray that you would have uh, your active hand upon them. That you would open up their mind to understand the good news of your gospel. That they would... Seek to learn more about you, how to follow you, how to know you, how to trust you. How to walk with you, how to obey. Oh God, I pray that you, for the, each of the volunteers that you would give them the strength and endurance that they need this week. God, I thank you, Lord, for our youth group. I thank you for Preston. I thank you for Ashley. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for Preston's leadership, Lord. May you continue to move through him and may you work through him lord as he speaks and preaches and and leads out father empower him to do so we pray all this in the name above all names in the name of jesus christ we pray amen thank you guys you might head back to your seats love you guys amen amen church family i want to thank you so much for not only your support in getting us to camp but uh, those of you who have stepped up and just in generosity have given, a, given uh, to allow all of our students to go this year, I am so, so grateful, and I want to reiterate that uh, time and time again. I've got a few exciting announcements, and then I'm going to make one more quick announcement. Uh, guys, you can go ahead and take your places at the back doors as well, and I'll announce something else here in just a moment. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the service, uh, if you are visiting with us today, grab a Connect card that's on the back of your pew. Take that, fill that out, and on your way out, you'll have an opportunity to pass by the offering plate. Drop that in the offering plate so we can better connect with you. Also, if you uh, are here today, we invite you to uh, give here in person or online. 
Uh, we uh, we uh, are so grateful, church, for the way, like I mentioned, that you have been faithful in giving. Let us continue to do that as we move forward through the summer months. This Tuesday uh, is going to be the second Tuesday of our kids' summer reading program. That takes place in our children's wing. They can come in at the children's wing. All kids up through fifth grade are invited to be a part of that. So please, 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 we encourage your child to come hang out. That will be taking place this Tuesday morning from 10 a.m. to noon. On top of that, our women's ministry, our, our men, first off, we had a delicious breakfast this morning. So I want to thank the ladies who prepared that for us. It was delicious. Uh, our women are having a summer picnic next week, June the 21st at 6.30 p.m., that's going to be an awesome, awesome time, so come hang out for that. That'll be here at the church in the Fellowship Hall, which, if you have not stopped by the Fellowship Hall, check out the floor. It looks phenomenal, so go check that out on your way out as well. Uh, and then, as John mentioned in his sermon earlier today, next Saturday, not this upcoming Saturday, I should reiterate, uh, but two Saturdays from now, on Saturday, June the 25th, we are hosting Impact OKC. And uh, Lenexa Baptist Church is going to be coming and partnering with us to put this event on. Uh, we will be hosting, to, just to love on our community, a free eyeglass clinic, a clothing closet, uh, and all kinds of stuff that's going to be happening. Free lunch, free food. Uh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Church family, we would love for you to participate in that. We want you to participate that, in that and be a part of it, especially the opportunity that we have to share the gospel that day. There's a very pointed opportunity in that day, built into that day, for us to be able to share the gospel and have gospel conversations with those in our community. Let us step up and be a part of that and do that next Saturday, June the 25th. That's going to be from 9 a.m., I believe, to 3 p.m. on that day. So be here. It's going to be a long day, but it's going to be so much fun to see. Last time we had this in 2018, we had over 1,000 people come through our doors that day. Um, and we, are, we would not be surprised to see something like that again, even more so this time. So be there. We need your help. Lastly, on our way out today, uh, our students have taken their places at our exits today. We have some bracelets that we want to give you today uh, that have a name of each student and volunteer on it that are going to camp this week. We invite you to take one of those on your way out, uh, put it on your wrist this week, and maybe every time you look down and you see it, you see a name that you can be praying for this week. Uh, at camp. We are excited to be going, and we're excited about what is going to be happening in the days to come. I'm going to turn it over to Pastor John for one more announcement, and then he'll pray for us as we go today. And lastly, next Sunday, the 19th, we'll be having, uh, handing out door hangers to um, a week in advance to share about the Impact OKC Day. So if you can come to the church 5 p.m. next week, um, we'll announce it again next Sunday. And we're going, we've been, the door hangers are in. Uh, there's going to be postcards. 5,000 postcards are going to hit the homes right around our church. And then we are going to hand out as many door hangers as we can. And then when the church, uh, Lenexa gets here on Friday, or on Thursday, they'll get here. But then on Friday, they're going to hand out all the rest of the door hangers. So they've just asked for us to help partner with them to saturate our community, to get the word out that we have impact. Uh, OKC on June 25th. And so, uh, yeah, we need your help. If you're able to walk, able to move, able to go, next Sunday, be here, and we'll hit the streets together, okay? Would you guys stand as I pray? <laughs> Father God, we thank you so much for this day that you've made. We thank you, oh God, for how you're moving. Lord, in so many different ways, uh, Lord, we, a we ask that you would have your hand upon our time at False Creek with all the youth. And Lord, we ask that you would even now be drawing men and women, boys and girls to yourself um, for the impact day. Lord, may we see an awakening take place. May we see many men and women, boys and girls come to know you as their Lord and Savior through these outreaches, through these events. And Lord, may we be intentional as we go. Lord, may we be intentional as we uh, go to lunch today that we might be the light of the world. As we live, as we Go to work tomorrow. May we be the light of the world. May we see um, friends and relatives and neighbors and coworkers come to know you because you're working in and through our lives. God, we give you all the glory for all that you are doing and all that you're going to do in our midst. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.